This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. This is Koji. And this is Martin. And this is the best or worst podcast. This is episode number 83. 83. Our society's our society is so focused on celebrity, we sometimes forget that regular people, regular people, lead interesting lives too. <laughs> best or worst moment of your life, hosts Koji Steven Sakai, that's me. And M. Martin Mapoma. That is definitely me. Are here to let your story out. We put people on the spot. What are you going to hear? It could be funny. It could be poignant. It could be sad. You'll know when we know. Best or worst is a twice weekly podcast on Tuesdays, which is today. We get to know our guests. And on Thursdays, that's two days from now, we find out about their best or worst moments. So today we are super, super excited to have the actor who just finished shooting Seal. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Seal Team Six. Uh, Seal Team. Seal. Oh, sorry. Seal Team. Seal Team Six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, this is an unprofessional podcast. How are you, Tim? I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> you, you didn't say his name. You just said SEAL Team. No, I said Tim. Yeah, yeah oh, Tim Chu. There you go. Oh, sorry. Tim Chu. Hey, Tim. How are you? Good, Tim, man. Good. I did a, Tim, Tim has been actually in two of my projects. He was in The People I Slept With, and he was in a short that we just did. That's, That's where actually, I recognize his friend. Yeah. Okay, yes. yeah. yeah. And, and he's been on TV and movies, and he's been all over the place, so he's He's a uh, professional actor. How, um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so I've been acting for over 15 years now. Um, I kind of started at UCLA. Um, so at UCLA, uh, my freshman year, I, I met um, Randall Park and Michael Golomko and David J. Lee and, and uh, Hugh Ho and a bunch of those guys. And you know they had their LCC theater company and I kind of uh, auditioned and joined my first year in college. And then um, meeting that group of people was very influential to me. Um, it kind of shaped the way I grappled with identity issues and cultural issues, and also um, how I looked at entertainment. Um, and it kind of really felt like I had a support group by then to launch into the entertainment industry. I kind of knew that it was something I wanted to do uh, as early as high school, but um, I started to kind of fashion myself as a filmmaker um, instead of an actor. And then um, basically when I joined this theater group, I kind of really kind of immersed myself as an, uh, on stage and as an actor. And then it kind of just took off from there. And after college, I realized, oh, so what am I, what am I going to do with my life? I don't, I don't know. And, but I always found myself gravitating towards acting. Like I was, we were still doing shows. We were still doing theater. And I thought, gosh, I'm kind of doing this like 13, 14 hours a day for free. Maybe I should just try to get paid for it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so That's I thought, how it goes. Yeah. And then I just thought, okay, why not give it a shot? And then that's how it happened. Uh, that's great. So just been plugging away. I didn't even realize that you wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, have you? Have you been? Have you? Have you? Or before in the past? Did you? Do you still want to be a filmmaker? Is that something that's been pushed? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's always been in the back of my mind to kind of like maybe get behind the camera again. Um, and I guess the easiest way for me to do that is to start writing. Uh, but unfortunately, I can only have one hat on at the at a time. So if I start writing, sure. then that's the only thing I can do. And, and like, I, I can't even be like a person, a human being, you know, like uh, I'm terrible with personal relationships at that point. Like I'm just, I'll be doing that, you know, 20 hours a day, not sleeping, not eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, and definitely not acting. And, and right now acting is what's uh, bringing home the bacon. So I got to focus on that. <laughs> Yeah, what, cool, cool. The, the question I always ask uh, Asian people in the film, in the any kind of creative industry is, what is your what did your parents think of this uh, this field of, that you wanted to go into? So that was it was interesting because um, I I actually dropped out of college. Um, there was a certain point, like you know, so I I I went to Whitney High School in Cerritos, oh. super nerd high school, right? Yeah. Like. You were considered, I, th I think a lot of Asian Americans experiences where like, if you weren't taking like all APs, like if you had like maybe 
fifty percent honors classes or even majority honors classes, you were considered dumb. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oof. I, I went to Stanford yeah. High School. Like I totally get it. Don't yeah. Worry. So so it's like so it's, it's like there's this academic pressure just like through the roof, you know. Um, I was I was skipping school to finish homework, and I would I would at, by the time I was fourteen, I would steal my parents' car, drive to Denny's at ten p.m study for a test or write an essay till 5 a.m go home take a shower you know do water polo practice and then go to school wait wait three times a week wait 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 you were stealing your parents car yeah to go do homework yeah because because if i stayed in my room my parents would 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 check on me and they'd be like why aren't you sleeping you should be too good at your work to take this long you know what I'm saying? So they would yell at me. For, for wow. Not, yeah. Oh, yeah, was, my God. It was, it was ridiculous. This um, is so a, I, <laughs> just so I could have the, the peace of mind to finish my work, I would go to Denny's. And obviously, they prov- you know, you order one cup of coffee and then you can have 20 refills, which is what I ended up doing. Um, oh, jeez. Did they know you were doing that? Or did you tell them later no, on? No. Was- no, eventually I did get caught. Um, and they didn't uh, and that was you, really right? bad. Oh yeah, they punished me really bad. Um, I got my, I got I got pulled over by the cops actually, and, and so I was on. Uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a bad deal, but it was uh, the biggest hit was to my studying techniques. <laughs> my God, you know, oh, I have so much um, I want to unpack with this one. Yeah, but yeah. so at, at, at any case, like uh, eventually, um, that all kind of came to a head in college. And I woke up one day, the day of the final, and I was kind of like, I don't think I'm going to go. I'm kind of just done doing this. I'm, I'm done, like, pushing myself to this point over and over and over again. And so I just dropped out. And then we fought. Like, I basically didn't really talk to my parents for, for about a year or two. Wow. Um, because they were like, well, so what are you going to do with your life? And I kind of was just like, well, I think, I, I think I'm going to go – be an actor and so we just really didn't talk about it um and i i thought about okay maybe i should invite them to some shows but i also i don't think they would have gotten it you know it's it's a little bit above their their heads as a first gen immigrant you know and i eventually came to the realization was like you know what they do respect is accomplishments is achievements so I wasn't going to say anything. I, I would let them, I mean, I was floundering. I was like starving and broke all the time, but um, I would just let my work accomplishments speak for themselves. And eventually they would keep seeing me on TV. And then and one day, I think they just realized like, okay, I guess this is serious because I keep seeing him on TV. So <laughs> wow. yeah, that's, that's how, how, kind of how I earned their respect. That's hilarious because uh, I, before I went to Samurai, I went to a place called Flaring's Prep and I was studying like every night. I studied 12 hours a night. Yeah. So from like, I get home Wait. from like, I get home from four o'clock from baseball practice or something and I'd study straight till four o'clock in the morning. I go to sleep, I wake up and I wouldn't even finish my homework because I couldn't finish all my homework in that time. Yeah. So yeah. I'd have to copy homework at school in order to finish all the homework, even though I just did 12 hours of study. And I remember, um, I remember if I'd left that school like, sophomore year in high school and I went to San Marino and San Marino was the easiest school I've ever been to <laughs> I was like this is so much easier than what I was doing and I just remember a lot of my friends got burned out because it's hard to do 12 hours of studying every night from seventh grade on you know to yeah go to college and a lot of them dropped out in college because they're just like fuck this I can't I can't keep doing this this is this is crazy I didn't but, know you went to prep I went to prep for a lot yeah you did remember we talked to the other dude Jack oh, and, Jack! That's right. Yeah. How did I forget that? That's and right. Then, uh, that's yeah, right. but I totally, I totally get that. That was that's really interesting. Um, so wait, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in here in Los Angeles, or I grew up in Cerritos. Oh, Cerritos. Oh, shit. Yeah, Sorry. Cerritos Bye-bye. Auto Square. Yeah, you know, I got to tell you, <laughs> if, my, if, my, if, if my parents, you know, if, if my if if I got pulled over by the cops and my parents, I'm assuming the cops took you home, right? Yep. I did. I think if 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 the cops would take me home to my parents and said, "Yeah, we caught him at Denny's and he was studying." <laughs> No, he was driving. He was driving. No, 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 driving. Yeah. And then they, then they realized, you know, yeah. through their further interrogation that I'd actually been studying. I, I think that my, 
<laughs> my parents would have been dumbfounded <laughs> in, so, in so many ways. Yeah. I, I mean, the idea of being punished would have been out the window. I think they would have thrown me a party. Yeah, but that's and, I was, and, and it wasn't, you know, oh, dude, but it's African, dude. African parents are the same way. Yeah. You know, African parents are the same, you know, especially in my part of the world. And it's not that I wasn't a good student, but I, oh, I, to me, I'm thinking that, you know, if when you say your parents must have caught you and they weren't happy, wow, that's it's just, that, that's, that's, you know, I, th- I thought I'd heard everything. I've never heard of anybody stealing the car to go do homework and then get punished by their parents oh, for it. I've had my friends do that. A lot of my friends do that. It's pretty, it's not super uncommon. Asian, we, as Asian people, we had to do, we had to study. <laughs> no, no, I know. Oh, I, I, I get, you know, I get that. I get that. But I think the mindset, you know, it's interesting what Tim said that, you know, they, they didn't think you were smart enough to do it at home. You have to go out to do it. That's just a whole nother world. Well, no, no, smart enough because he, he had to, he wasn't sleeping and stuff. No, that's what I'm, yeah. that's, 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 that's kind of what I'm saying. I just, okay. Wow, man, my hat's off to you. That's dedication. That, you know, that kind of work ethic. And, that's why, and I think that's one of the reasons why you're probably as, as successful as you are as an actor because, you know, that kind of work ethic, you know, in this industry, because I've been an actor for 25 years now. And one of the things I learned early on is that, you know, the idea of people getting invited into Hollywood, it doesn't happen. If you put in no. the work, if you put in the work and really put the work in, they eventually let you in because, and Koji can attest to this, there, there is no time to coddle anybody. You know, exactly. There's, there's, there's always so much money on the line. You can't go in and just fuck up a little bit. They just they just move right on. You know, so I yeah. think that that's wow. That you know that that really that really sort of shows me what kind of work ethic you have. That's impressive. You know, yeah. Yeah. when you tell because when you tell me that story, when I heard that story, I'm like, yeah, that's why he's doing well as an actor because you can't you can't you can't train someone to steal a car and go to Denny's to do homework. Denny's, man, wow, no, that's, Denny's. That's years, that's years of pressure, though. <laughs> that's years and the fact of, that Koji thinks that San Marino was 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 easy compared to Flint Ridge is funny. That's also oh, crazy. Yeah. San Marino was a, my first day at San Marino. I took a test, and it was it was a book that I had read in seventh grade, and I was, was tenth. This is tenth grade, and I was like, "This is going to be the biggest joke." We could, at Flint Ridge, the, t- the tests were like first, like all the all the grades were. You listen to a lecture, you write an essay, like a twenty page essay, and you take a final or mid and midterm, and that's like all the work that you do. You just read yeah. books constantly. And it's like college class. That's why when I went to, I got to Sam Ray, I was like, wait, you want me to do a ditto? You want me to fill in the blank? What the hell? Like, this is like elementary school shit. Right. Wow. <laughs> so, Tim. Like, this is a joke. Anyway. Wow. So, Tim, so what have you done recently uh, besides SEAL, SEAL Team? Um, so, uh, it just got announced actually yesterday, two, two days ago. Uh, well, anyway, um, that a film I did uh, called. Uh, I was a simple man. Just got selected for Sundance. Congratulations! So that just happened, um, and then you know I was in that movie Plus One with uh, Maya Erskine and Jack Quaid. My cat's like trying to come in into the room. You're what? Um, my cat. My okay. Cat. Uh, she's feeling left out because one of the cats is in here, but she's chilling. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, and then I've just been kind of like hustling and trying to trying to get other stuff off the ground. Like I actually have to tape two auditions today. One's due by six o'clock, so, okay. so we'll get out of here. Don't worry. But Tim, the one yeah, thing I do want to, the one I want to, I wanted, I've always wanted to do with you is I always want to make a superhero movie with you. So I always thought you could be a superhero. Dude, that would be fun. So we we should. I, you actually... know, I I don't have any trajectory yeah, I can to see be that. a superhero just yet, uh, but I'd love to be one. Not not like the lame like uh, the Marvels creating that lame one. That's it's gonna be lame, but somebody, something that's, you <laughs> oh, know, oh, like I know, right? I know, I know what you're gonna it's say. Terrible, it's like based on a stereotypical, like stereotype, and it's like, yeah, like based on a stereotype. It's, yeah, that one's gonna be ch- interesting. I mean, uh, I'll be really curious to see what what yeah. happens with it. But, but you know, like a lot of the Marvel and, and superheroes in general mm-hmm. are just kind of created with really, really old ideas. That was their yeah. origin, and so it, it's kind of up to the people making them to kind yeah. of modernize them and give them yeah. something that's way yeah. more relatable. Yeah, yeah, I like the whole Kung Fu series with, with Luke Cage and Iron Fist. That was so bad. Well, there's, oh. no, there's no Asian people in it. Or... Iron Fist. And, and the whole Iron Fist character. I, <laughs> I, I can't begin to tell you how much I just detested that whole thing. So. Or the movie, or the TV show Kung Fu. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I know. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Tim, so much for coming on. It was great getting to know you. So um, we'll get to, in two days, we'll ask you about your best or worst. So think about uh, 
answers for both because we're going to surprise you with an answer for one of them. But yeah. for everybody, please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. We really appreciate you guys listening. Please do it. Please, uh, as Martin always says, please take uh, to let people know about our podcast. It's the only way we keep going. Yeah. So, Tell a friend. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.